Alright, I'm David Harry and in this video I will be comparing the iPhone 15 Pro Max against the iPhone 16 Pro Max and this particular comparison is going to be a speed test comparison and very specifically to see how both of these iPhones compare to one another for transferring data over their USB-C ports to an external USB-C SSD. Okay, so just before I get into the speed testing, let me just explain what I've got here. So this is my iPhone 15 Pro Max, and this is my iPhone 16 Pro Max. And as you will notice, these have got some really nice cases on them as well. Now these are Kevlar cases by Banks. There will be links to those cases in the video description below if you like the look of them. And then what I've got here is my SSD, and also the USB-C to USB-C cable that I will be using. Now I'm just going to quickly show you this SSD that I am using. This is basically one that I've put together and it is super easy to put together. Basically it is a Sabrent enclosure which is a USB-C to NVMe enclosure and very importantly this is a 10 gigabit enclosure. Now if I just open it up and if I turn it this way we should be able to see inside there is a samsung ssd 980 now this is a gen 3 nvme ssd now just to be clear even if this were to be a gen 4 nvme ssd with inside this enclosure we wouldn't see any differences between gen 4 and gen 3 for this type of enclosure and the reason why is because both gen 3 and gen 4 nvme ssds are going to be a lot faster than the actual bandwidth that this USB-C enclosure is capable of, which is 10 gigabits per second. Now don't forget, 10 gigabits per second equates to 1250 megabytes per second and like I say both Gen 3 and Gen 4 NVMEs will easily exceed that speed however there is another reason why I'm using this particular SSD and the reason why is because I have tried many Gen 4 NVMe SSDs within these types of enclosures and none of the ones that I tried would actually work when connected to an iPhone 15 Pro Max and that is simply because between the Gen 4 or NVMe SSD and the enclosure there is just too much power required in order to operate them so like I say this one here is perfect because it does work now let me just close that over there and then also what we've got here is a 10 gigabit USB-C to USB-C cable which actually comes with the Sabrent enclosure Okay, so the first phone that I am going to test will be the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now just quickly, as we can see here, it is actually connected to the SSD. And hopefully I can keep both the phone and the SSD straight. What it is, this cable wants to push the SSD sideways. However, we can see that it is connected. Now what I'm going to do here is go into the files app and the first thing I will show you is how much spare space that I've got on this iPhone now just remember this iPhone has got 512 gigabytes of storage so I'm just going to tap on my iPhone there and then I'm going to tap get info now as we can see here this has basically got 160 gigabytes of used space so obviously the amount of free space here that we've got is tons and well enough for doing this particular test so let me just click on done there now what I'm going to do is just show you what is actually on the external SSD and the external SSD is actually this icon here which says 1TB XFAT in fact on that point the SSD has been formatted to XFAT and in my tests as well that I've done before doing this video XFAT runs slightly faster than APFS now as far as APFS is concerned if you're just sticking completely to Mac then you may want to use APFS because of its advantages within Mac OS however for portable SSDs XFAT really is the better of all the formats because you may want to use your SSD in things such as Windows computers and such like anyway I'm just going to 
tap onto there. Now I've got a folder here that says speed test files. If I just tap into here, there are a number of different folders and files in here, which are all basically either video files or picture files, which is typically the type of stuff that people might want to be transferring to and from their iPhones with an external SSD. Now what I'm going to do here is to just show you the total file size of the folder. So I'm just going to do a long press here, then I'm going to tap on Get Info. Now on Get Info here, as we can see, this is saying that the total folder size is 100.05 gigabytes. Now the exact size of that folder is actually 100,047 megabytes as measured per Mac OS. So that particular measurement of 100,047 megabytes is what I will be using during my calculations for the bit rates. Now another point to make here, all SSDs and all storage use base 10 for their storage measurement. So basically what that means is there are a thousand megabytes in a gigabyte and a thousand gigabytes in a terabyte, so on and so forth. And that will be what I will be sticking to within these calculations. We no longer use 1024 for measuring like disk space and file size for disk space and stuff like that. Anyway, I'm just gonna tap on done here. So the first thing that I am going to do is to copy that folder from the external SSD to the internal storage of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So in effect here, what I will be doing is testing the write speed of the internal storage of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So what I'm going to do here is just tap on the folder. I'm going to select copy. I'm going to come back on the browser I'm going to go into on my iPhone, which is obviously the internal storage. Now what I'm going to do is to paste this folder into the storage area here and then hit start at the same time with this stopwatch. And then what we will do is get a timing for how long it takes to transfer the entire folder. So let me just try this, hold on. So I'm gonna hit paste and start, hopefully at the exact same time. Okay, so that was roughly the exact same time. Now what's going to happen here is obviously this will take a little bit of time, so I'm going to speed through this. However, as soon as that folder is kind of like, you know, populated onto that spare space there, I will then hit stop. What you'll also notice is that there is a circle at the top here which starts going like blue. So that's the indication as to how fast the data is transferring over. However, I will hit stop once the folder kind of Go solid here so let me just speed through until this is actually transferred over okay I'm just gonna come back in here and get ready to hit stop as soon as that folder is transferred over okay so stop okay so that was two minutes and nine seconds so I'm just going to make a note of that Okay, so what I'm going to do now is basically the reverse process, and that will be to transfer the folder from the iPhone 15 Pro Max back over to the external SSD. And in this instance, this is basically the read speed for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, to be clear, let me show you what I've already done here. So if I go back to the external storage, as we can see, I've deleted that folder. And then if I go to deleted items here or recently deleted, as we can see, I've cleared that as well. Now, the reason why I've cleared the deleted items is just in case there may have been like residual files hanging around, which could possibly get in the way of the actual testing. But as we can see here, this is all ready to go. So what I'm going to do is tap on on my iPhone, go and find that folder, which is here, speed test files. Again, I'm just going to tap on there, and then I'm going to select copy. I'm going to come back. I'm going to tap on 1TB XFAT here, which is the external storage. And again, I'm just going to paste and then start the timer. Okay, so paste and start the timer. Once again, I will let this run through. Then I will come back once this blue dot here is actually filled up because right now the folder looks blue. So I'll have to take the indicator from when the blue dot fills up.
Okay, I'm just gonna come back in here and get ready to hit stop once that blue dot is filled up. Stop. Okay, I'm going to call that one minute and 54 seconds. So let me just make a note of that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now are the exact same tests, but with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Now, as we can see here, the SSD is connected to it. And let me see if I can get this to stay straight again. In fact, actually at this point, if I just turn this to the side, as we can see, there's the new camera button there, which definitely tells us that this is the iPhone 16 Pro Max. This SSD just doesn't want to stay still, unfortunately. Hold on, okay, that'll have to do. Right, so the first thing that I'm going to do here is once again show you how much spare space that I've got. Once again, bearing in mind that this particular iPhone 16 Pro Max is also a 512 gigabyte model as well. So if I just tap on my iPhone there, sorry, wrong thing. If I long press on, on my iPhone and then tap on get info, so as we can see here, about 118 gigabytes of space has already been used. So that still leaves us tons of space for doing this test. So what I'm going to do is just click on done there. Now, once again, the first thing that I will do is to transfer the folder from the external storage to the internal storage of the phone. Once again, this will give us the right speed for the internal storage. Let me just see if I can straighten that up a little bit more. Okay, so I will go into the one terabyte external drive. Once again, long press on the folder. I'm going to tap on copy. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to select on my iPhone for the internal storage. And then once again, I'm going to tap paste and then hit start on the stopwatch at the same time. So go. Okay, now once again, what I'm going to do is to wait until the folder here turns blue and then hit stop. Now going back the other way just then with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, it was already showing a blue folder when we were going to the external storage, which is why I took the indication from when the blue dot thing filled up there. However, this way around, I'm just going to hit stop as soon as the folder turns blue here. Okay, I'm just gonna come back in here and get ready to hit stop. Stop. Okay, so that took one minute and 48 seconds. I will just make a note of that. Okay, so once again, I am going to do the reverse, as in move the folder from the internal storage of the iPhone 16 Pro Max to the external storage. Once again, this gives us an indication of the read speed of the internal storage over USB-C. And I will do the exact same thing here and show you that. The one terabyte external storage has no data in it there. Let me just come back here and I'll just show you that in recently deleted, there are no files in there. Just quickly again on this point, the reason why I make sure that any of the files have been properly deleted is just in case, you know, there could be residual files that may like interfere or something, you know, pre-cached files and stuff like that. However, as we can see, there are none. So what I'm going to do is go on my iPhone. I'm going to long press on the folder tap copy and then going to come back here to browse files go to the external storage and once again tap paste and start on the stopwatch at the same time so if you give us a moment okay now once again i'm just going to speed up through this and then hit stop on the stopwatch once the files have transferred over however as we can see here this time with the iphone 16 pro max that folder going to the external storage isn't showing blue immediately the way it was on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I haven't got a clue why that is. However, what I will do here is hit the stop button when the folder actually inside the storage area turns blue. Okay, I'm just gonna come back here and get ready. Okay, that will do for that. Now that was one minute and 53 seconds. I will make a note of that. 
Okay, so as far as these bit rates are concerned, and just remember, the total folder size was 100,047 megabytes, and we are measuring in base 10. The iPhone 15 Pro Max's write speed was 100,047 divided by 129, which is the amount of seconds that it took. And that equals 775, which equates to 775 megabytes per second. And then the iPhone 15 Pro Max's read speed was 100,047 megabytes divided by 114, with 114 being the amount of seconds that it took. And that equals 877. So 877 megabytes per second. And then moving on to the iPhone 16 Pro Max and its write speed was 100,047 megabytes divided by 108 again 108 being the amount of seconds that it took and that equaled 926 which is 926 megabytes per second and then finally the iPhone 16 Pro Max's read speed was 100,047 divided by 113, again 113 being the amount of seconds that it took to run the test, and then that ended up being 885, which is 885 megabytes per second. Okay, so to an end summary then, and this is going to be quite quick because we've already seen the results there. However, I would just like to make a couple of notes of my own here. Now, as far as the read speeds were concerned, they were effectively exactly the same. There was like one second difference in it, but that's really down to margin of error. So we're effectively talking between 877 to 885 megabytes per second and I would say that is very good for both of these phones anyway. Now as far as the write speeds were concerned there was actually a noticeable difference in those and that being that the iPhone 15 Pro Max was 775 megabytes per second whereas the 16 Pro Max was 926. Now I've got to say 775 is still fast anyway but 926 is really topping it out you're effectively not really going to get much faster than that with anything over USB-C at 10 gigabits per second you have to remember that although USB-C at 10 gigabits per second is 1250 megabytes per second you will never ever reach that speed with any storage device in an enclosure connected to any device at USB-C now there are a number of factors to consider when doing tests like these and in this particular test I would say that the main factor would be the SSD being used however I just want to make something clear here I run a lot of tests with different SSDs when I first got the iPhone 15 Pro Max and this particular combination that I used for the SSD in this test this ended up being the fastest SSD that I did use with the iPhone 16 Pro Max so I would say that this particular SSD was a good choice for this test anyways that will do it for this video and there will be Amazon links in the video description below for all the stuff that I've used within this video video now if you are into these types of videos and you are also interested in seeing other tests done with the iPhone 16 Pro Max then you may want to keep an eye on my channel because I will be doing a lot more videos with the iPhone 16 Pro Max and I will be comparing it with other devices in fact I will probably do the iPhone 16 Pro Max versus the Samsung S24 Ultra external SSD speed test very soon as well anyway if you found this video useful in any way please do give it a thumbs up a sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now